All right, anybody ready for the word tonight? Tonight, I have labeled this message, Mary had a little faith. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> I told you it was a faith message. <laughs> Even George is laughing. <laughs> Mary had a little faith. I think that's a very good message. Or at least a really good title. Beginning with the beginning of Christmas, I thought about going back to the promises of God in the Old Testament, but I thought, you know, we know the promises of God. We know that God promised to send His Messiah, and as Wednesday nights have seemed to be working, or God has been putting a lot of faith messages in Wednesday nights, at least for the past month and a half or two months, I figured that tonight we'll talk about faith. Can we do that? And the faith that Mary had to have, where she was living, where Mary... Anybody even know where Jesus' Jesus's hometown was? That's where he was born. Where was his hometown? Nazareth. Lazarus? No, Nazareth. Nazareth. <laughs> I had to pick a new William. All right, Nazareth. We'll talk about the history in just one second. Let's go to Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from the NIV version. You can read any version you'd like. They all say pretty much the same thing. I like the NIV just because it's for people like myself who, who, whose, whose uh, language isn't English. <laughs> See what I did there? Good. <laughs> English is not my first language, so I need a lot of help with English. Anybody with me? We have some native speakers who need help with English as well. That's why I like the NIV. Uh, the New King James is okay with me as well. I, I use that sometimes when I preach. But NIV is where I go to just because it's easier to understand. Starting with verse 26 all the way down to verse 38. And there's, when you go home, if you want to read about the birth of Jesus, go back to Luke 1. That's where we are today. And read the whole chapter. There's so much more that I cannot get to because of the time constraints. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to marry, to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. We'll get to the Greek word in a second. The Lord is with you. Mary was gr greatly troubled at his words and wondering what kind of greeting this might be. But, but the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child of her old age. And she, who, who, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servants, Mary said. Mary, uh, may, may your word be, to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary had a little faith. I know all of you want to say Mary had a little faith. I see it in your eyes. I started it. I'm sorry. But God, that's the way God gave it to me. That's the way I'm going to preach it, okay? And boy, was she surprised. And why was she surprised? Amen. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you know, very little information is given to Mary about what was about to happen to her. Have any, any of you ever been sent on a mission ever, don't care if it's 
your parents sending you to the store to get something and you are given very little information. Anybody? Yeah. Well, Mary had even less information. Yeah. I feel like my wife is about to tell a story. <laughs> no? Here's what happened to Mary. Let's go back to verses 30 through 33 and let's read this. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call his, him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Can I uh, tell you how I see this? Can I tell you how I see this, Donna? Okay. I'll let you talk first. <laughs> hello. Do not be afraid. That's, that's the angel's way of saying hello. Hello. You're about to be pregnant with the Son of God. Uh, Mary, you know, says, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming I, I, have any of you ever seen an angel? I, no. But I, I think from everything that I read in the Bible about seeing an angel, most people are stunned. So the, the the greeting, hello, is don't be afraid. Fear not. So that's a very good greeting. Hello, don't be afraid. You're about to be pregnant. <laughs> and Mary is asking herself, what kind of greeting is this? Now, is this, are you guys seeing this or am I by myself here? You see that here, right? Good. Because that's what I see. Hello, you're about to be pregnant. With the Son of God. Now, can I tell you a little bit from the uh, from the history, from history then and from history now? From history then, they were expecting the Messiah, and from everything that they have heard from the prophets, all of them, well, all of the young ladies expected that one of them would be the mother of the Messiah. Just think about this. Every young lady, even here, throughout history, ever wants to have a baby at one point. And if you are a Jewish girl at the time of uh, when Jesus was born, about 2,000 years ago, you wanted to be the mother of the Messiah. Although not, that's not mentioned too much in history, if you go through the Jewish history, you can, you can read about this, that a lot of ladies at that time in history wanted to become the mother of the Messiah. I didn't know that. Huh? I didn't know that. That's interesting. You can look at it in, in history. So. Thank you, Don. Thank you for believing me for once. Yeah, no, no different. Of and this is a very interesting greeting by the angel. And Mary turns to this angel and says, in verse 34, how will this be? I am a virgin. I've never had any intimate relationship with a man. Now, she is pledged to be married to Joseph. Can I tell you the, their historical courting, if you may? The way, the way marriage is happening back, back then is, for example, Somebody from this side would have a baby, and about the same time, one of their friends on this side would have a baby, and they say, well, can you imagine, you're, you're pregnant and you're pregnant, and when we have kids, if it's a boy and a girl, we can get married in X amount of years. Now, it is, it is assumed that Mary is, is a teenager at this point. That was the custom of getting married about a teenager. And that's the way the marriage proposal worked, is, their parents and their parents would make, make a decision either before they're born or when they're born or uh, later on in life. They would, the parents are the ones that would make the decision. Because, well, I don't know if you know this or not, but teenagers aren't really good at making decisions. I don't know why you're laughing, <laughs> but it's true. Teenagers are not very good at making decisions, right, George? Remember, look at George, second row. The one that's holding the pillow. 
I love George. Don't steal George from me. Good job, George. There you go. <laughs> Teenagers are not good at making decisions. And when the parents decide that it's time to marry of their son, a teenager, most likely, who already has a trade, so, you know, higher end of the, of the teenage years, and a young, uh, they would propose to the, to the parents of this young lady, who's usually in her lower teenage years, and you do the math, so there is a, an age gap, usually uh, three to five years, at the time of Jesus' birth, you can look it up in history, sometimes even older, Look at the Muslims, they'll tell you. So, th there would be a year, about a year, from when this young lady is pledged to this young man. About a year, they are known as married, yet they, they're they learning to be married. Because, for those of you who have had teenagers, you can testify that teenagers... For them to get anything right, it needs to be taught for about a year. That, that was the custom. And yet, so th these two, uh, young man and young woman, they're married, yet no, uh, no physical contact for a year. If the young man was to die, the young lady would be a widow, although she was never married from our understanding of being married. She would be considered a virgin widow. And during this time, they're learning how to get along. You know, teenagers need help with that sometimes. And Mary would be a pledge. We don't know how long, how far along the mar their marriage thing they are with the year. We don't know. And it's really none of our business. But yet, Mary turns to the angel and says, how will this be? You want me to become the mother of the Messiah, yet you're calling him the son of God. Not all of them understood at that point that he was going to be a son of God. As a matter of fact, right now in, in, in Jerusalem, in Israel rather, or Jerusalem, there are a few understandings of how the Messiah is going to be coming. Can I tell you those two? There's two understandings, two, two leading understandings. There is a sect in, in Judaism that believes that a man will give birth to the Messiah. And the high priest uh, actually is supposed to be the one give, that would give birth to, the, to this Messiah. Yes, a little skewed understanding, not, not biblical, not Torah, but that's what they understand. There is another understanding in Judaism, and that's the majority of the people uh, in Israel who are God-fearing, if you may, uh, they believe that the Messiah will be the one who's going to rebuild the third temple, or the last temple. And he's going to be the Messiah. That's more biblical, that's more alongside uh, what the Bible teaches us. And, you know, if you go through, uh, we, we don't have time to go through, through this tonight, but the Bible says that the temple will be rebuilt. And then during this time of rebuilding, the seven years, during about half, halfway, the Jewish people understand that he's not the Messiah. He's going to proclaim himself as God and sit on the throne and proclaim himself, I am the Messiah. And yet he's going to be against God and he's going to be against Israel. Right. We can go through, if you guys ever want to go through that, we, we can. I don't have to, time to do that tonight. So th those are the two understandings right now about how Messiah is going to come. And at the time of Jesus' birth, the, le the young ladies understood that one of them would be the mother of the Messiah, or the mother of the Most High God. And the angel answers very simply, verses 35 through 37. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come in you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the Holy One to be, to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who's, who, who was said to be unable to conceive in her is in her sixth month, for no word of God will ever fail. 
Can we stress that one more time? Yeah. No word of God will ever fail. You may clap. Yes. No word of God will ever, ever fail. The translation, as I see it, have some faith and let God do what only he can do. And by the way, your aunt, because it is from, from the age difference, it is understood that it's her aunt. Although it's, it doesn't specifically say it's her aunt. It says that you're relative. <clears throat> but your aunt Elizabeth, the one who's a little older, so the Bible says, the one who couldn't have any children, naturally that is, has a baby on the way. Because that's what God said. Let me read, repeat, repeat, repeat that one more time for you. Verse 37. For no word of God will ever fail. God said it. He did it. We, whether we believe it or not, that's the way it happened. Amen? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure all of you are ready to submit to what the angels have said already, right? So, it, it sounds plausible. This angel shows up for you and say, Mary, hello, don't be afraid. You're about to be pregnant. Uh, how? Don't worry about it. Let God deal with it. And Mary, verse 38 says, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. And the, the angel left her. Can I tell you one more time that Mary had a little faith? From everything that I have told you, you have to have some faith. In order to say, I am the Lord's servant, may it happen to me, just like you said. And, you know, as we start our Christmas season, I want us to have a little more faith. Amen. Because God, if God said it, whether we believe it or not, it's going to happen. Amen? Amen? You know that I'm probably not the most qualified person to stand up here and preach to you guys. However, God said it, and thus it is happening. There, there were plenty of other candidates, a lot more qualified than I am, to stand here, yet God said it, and therefore I am here. Amen? So this season of Christmas, I want every single one of us to have a little bit more faith. Can we say a little bit more faith? A lot more faith. Some of us need a lot more faith. And no matter where we are in our walk of faith, no matter what the circumstances you find yourself today or in the season, as the Lord reaches into your life and asks you to become a valuable part of the kingdom, would you have a little faith to do so? You sure we're going with this? This is a faith message. This is the first Christmas faith message that I'm preaching this season. Now, can I talk to you about Mary, where she lived? The kind of faith, and you already have some understanding kind of faith she had to have in order to say yes. And then how can we apply it to our lives today? Can I do that for you? Yeah. Thank you. Verse 26. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent, an, sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, not Lazarus, a town in Galilee. I'm picking up William. William, please forgive me. Okay. Nazareth, at the time of birth of Jesus, had a reputation. Anybody wants to know what kind of reputation Nazareth had? Can anything good come out of it? Huh? I feel like Donna was reading. <laughs> no, that's what it said. John 146. Will you put up John 146? Nazareth? This is Nathaniel talking to Philip and Andrew. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? And Philip says, come and see, of course. But Nazareth had a nasty reputation, a really, really bad one. How bad? I was going to say, how bad? how bad? They had no morals and they had no religion. Does that remind you of a place where you might live today? 
See, Nazareth had a point in history, had a very important role, but at the time of Jesus' birth, that role was lost. It was no longer an important town. It was despised both by the Romans and the Jews. It was despised by, despised by the Romans because nobody likes unruly people. Somebody say amen. Nobody likes unruly people. Those people that make a big mess in your downtown, nobody likes them too much. Let's just say what, how it is. And the Jews did not like uh, Nazareth either because they were not willing to submit to the Jewish law. It was very similar, if, if I may say it this way. Can you imagine Windsor Locks, Enfield, Suffield, Windsor, am I missing East Windsor? Am I missing a town that you guys are from? Windsor Locks. Can you imagine your, uh, uh, at the town hall the gossip that would that would be happening when some uh, somebody does something bad? And that usually does happen, right? Usually there's a lot of gossip. Nothing nothing productive happens, and yet nobody wants to fix the uh, the problems with the town either. Um, we can we can look at, in Windsor Locks and Main Street how it's abandoned pretty much, and yet. <clears throat> There's some good ideas floating around, but nobody's ever doing anything about it. Just winter locks, you know. I can talk to you about Suffield, and in Suffield there was a vote a couple of years ago about changing the school, uh, School Street School, or Bridge Street School, to, to, to sell it and make it productive, uh, tax paying, yet um, that, that idea was turned down, and then it, was, it happened that now they're going to knock it down and make a park out of it. See, a lot of good ideas are happening in our towns. East Windsor, Windsor, I'm sorry, I don't know too much about you guys, but I, I promise you, stuff like, stuff like this is happening in your town as well. Yet, any time somebody would say something about church, it's like, oh, here you go again, one of those guys, he's got to talk about church. This is what's happening in Nazareth. Do we understand what, 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 it, what it's like? Can I go a step further? Because Jesus, be, calling calling a uh, Nazareth as his hometown, although he was born in Bethlehem, because Mary and Joseph were from, from Nazareth, Jesus was also known as a Nazareth, uh, from, uh, from Nazareth. And he came back to minister there. Let's, let's look at Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee, in well, Nazareth, in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. Now, can you imagine one of us leaves the place, goes to a Bible college, gets filled up with the Holy Spirit, that as, he, as, as the person coming back, as they lay their hands on the sick, they're healed. As, as they preach, the power of God is released. Can you imagine that? This is what he's talking about. Jesus returned to his hometown in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread. And you would think that would be some good news, right? After all, Jesus, one of our own, came back. There are healings, there are deliverances, there's baptism in the Holy Spirit. Well, let's, let's go down to verse 28 and 29. All the people of the synagogue were furious when they heard him, when they heard this. They got up and drove him out of town and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to crown him as king. Oh, you are you are falling. In order to throw him off the cliff. See, the power of God is great when there are people who are hungry to receive it. Somebody say amen. However, when the people I don't want to receive it, it's offensive. The gospel is pleasing to some and offensive to others. Matthew 13, 58 says, and he did not do any miracles there because of their lack of faith. Lack of faith? They wanted to kill him. They wanted to throw him off a cliff. Can you imagine living in such a place? Can you imagine this? Where everyone around you doesn't believe and better yet they want to silence you for your beliefs. New England, anybody? We're there. This is the place where Jesus called home. 
This is where Mary was from. Can you imagine how much pressure Mary would be under living in such a place? And in living in such a place, and the angel comes to her and says, Greetings, you all who are favored by the Lord. This, the, the spoken blessing spoken over her came from the throne room of God. And in Greek, it's, it's, it's uh, the highly favored is charito. Did I say that right? Charito. Well, that's that's how it's written in the highly favored. Well, why is why you think about it? I'll continue preaching, okay? Chirito, highly favored. It's a divine favor freely given from God Himself, and God can give His favor or grace to anyone who He wants to. Amen. Regardless of where you live. Doesn't matter where you stand, you know, socially, God can send his favor on you anytime. All you need to do is, to do is believe. And many times we um, grow, you know, as, I, as I've been growing up and I've seen a lot of pictures of Mary, we think of Mary as this beautiful young girl. Well, living downtown, Living in a really awful place like Nazareth or New England, it would be very difficult to see this picture come about. Mary didn't have to be beautiful to be chosen by God. The only thing that Mary had to do was to be pure. She had to want to become the mother of the Messiah. You want to be able to be used by God regardless of where you're from. Regardless if you're from Windsor Locks, Southfield, East Windsor, Windsor, West Springfield, Massachusetts, Connecticut, United States, or the world. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your social status is. It doesn't matter um, what you look like. God can use you because Mary had a little faith. Somebody say amen. Romans chapter 2, verses 28 through 29, we read this. And when it says Jew, don't, don't read it as Jew, read it as a Christian. Can we do that? Because uh, Romans was written to, to a Jewish audience in, a, uh, in Rome. So uh, uh, Apostle Paul writing it calls Jews, Jews. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna instead of using the word Jew, we're gonna use the word Christian. Can we do that? A person is not a Jew or a Christian who is one outwardly, nor is circum uh, circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is Jew or a Christian one who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumstances circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from the, from other is not from other people, but from God. So a Christian, here's my translation: a Christian is a person who has faith in in his heart, not just the outward appearance, but the inward appearance. Do we understand this? Because what's inside of us is more important than what's on the outside. Because all of us can, you know, put a little makeup on. All of us can, you know, color our hair a different color. All of us can have beautiful clothes. All of us can have a nice outward appearance. It's what's on the inside that matters. Don't get me wrong, the outward appearance, I'm glad all of you look good. Praise God for that. Somebody say amen. Get myself in trouble here. Pastor, yes. Uh, hi is C law. Okay. I can't think of the other. Favorite. Uh, the the word cherry cherry toll is used twice uh, in, in in all of the Bible. So 
So it's it's a very uh, it's highly esteemed um, word. The, the the other time when it's when it's used, I think it's in Colossians, and it's talking about the high uh, high favor or high grace of God. It's only used twice in, in all of the Bible. So it could be one of the you know older, really really old terms. Cherry tall. I can spell it for you. All right. Thank you. Mary had a little faith and a lot of cheritoal from God. She was highly favored by God. She had a little faith and a lot of grace, a lot of favor. Say, I have cheritoal. Cheritoal. To-o. 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 Like, oh. Oh, I get it. Yes. I want lots of favor here. Let's just be honest here. If you guys don't want the favor, I'll take it back. <laughs> Cherry Toho on me. <laughs> Cherry Toho on you as well. Highly favored. Full of grace. Mary was a virgin represent, uh, representing that which is pure. The, she had a heart that was sold out to the will of God and she was willing to die to self, to herself, for the purpose of God, she rep she represents the heart of a hungry Christian, a hungry Christian after God today. Mary had a little faith. Mary, who who had a heart after God, gave birth to the to a son who walked on this filthy earth however, remained sinless and gained victory over sin and death so you and I do not have to be slaves to sin any longer. We have eternal life because, of, because Mary had a little faith. Now, we don't worship Mary as some Christian um, denominations do. Can I tell you what, why we don't worship Mary? She was a vessel. She was a vessel that brought forth what was inside of her. What was inside of her? Jesus. We don't worship this bottle. We drink the water. Anybody want to drink the bottle? It might be toxic. The bottle is toxic. The water is good, right? One. You want it? No? You want it? Nice catch. I should have thrown it like... No, I don't. Drink the water. Don't drink the bottle. Okay? The immaculate conception... Go ahead. Yes. How do you talk? Yeah, that's like that. I might have mispronounced it. Hari Hari Dol. It's like that. Hari. It's like it's like a favoring. Yes. I I I knew I got the right word. <laughs> Thank you, Demetrius. I don't speak that much anymore. I understand. My mother realizes I'm losing it, and I realize a little English is up. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. I like the way that I pronounce it. At least my, my way I can pronounce it. <laughs> but Harito? Good. Harito. Now it sounds a little uh, uh, Japanese, right? <laughs> it's highly favored. I want more of that. However you pronounce it, I want more, more favor. I want more grace on my life. Amen? All right. So, uh, Immaculate Conception. There is a, a Christian uh, denomination who believes in Immaculate Conception. We don't. We believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. Immaculate Conception goes as far as saying that Mary was virgin born as well. We, that's not biblical. It's not necessary 
However, the, the birth of Jesus is necessary to be a virgin birth because the prophecy was that a virgin will give birth. Amen? So that is important. Whether Mary was virgin birth, I don't think that really matters. And uh, theologically, it doesn't matter. She wasn't, for, as far as I'm concerned. But Mary was the physical mother of Jesus. Amen? And he is the one that gives us this new covenant that we find in his shedding blood on the cross. Mary was the vessel that brought us Jesus. This bottle is a vessel to bring water when I'm thirsty. Just watch. The vessel, the, the, the vessel was decent, but the water was so much better. How many of you understand where I'm going with this, right? Okay. The Christmas season, I'll, uh, I, this Christmas season, I want all of us to have a little faith like Mary had. To walk in submission to the Lord as Mary did. Verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. Say it with me. I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. I have the group to sing the last song. I give myself away. Because it goes so well with this faith message. Because Mary had to give herself away in order to be used. Yes. Now during this one year courting, if you may. Or uh, this one year when Mary was married or pre-married to Joseph. If it was found out that she had any... Um, physical contact with any man, including Joseph, she would be stoned. And not the other stone, like literally rocked. They would rock her world, if you know what I mean. They would kill her. And so she, she literally had to give herself away, knowing what was about to happen. The desire of a child of God should be Full surrender to the will of God on their life, regardless of consequences. The will of God for us is always good. Amen? We don't always understand that it is good, because we always look at the will of God at my current circumstances. Faith, however, has a further out um, vision than just currently. Romans 12 puts it perfectly. Let's go to Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. You hear this? I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, in view of God's favor, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. My translation, if you may. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to look at God's favor and offer up yourself fully, not looking at your current circumstances, by looking forward at the promise of God's will, of God's promise. His good, perfect, and pleasing will. Do we understand this a little better? We can choose to submit to God's will, just like Mary did, Offer all of ourselves. Mary offered all of herself in in faith to him, not knowing what Joseph would say, not knowing what her parents would say, not knowing what the other Nazarites would say, or Nazarenes, or however you want to call those people. People that live in Nazareth. You probably knew what they would say. 
they, she had an idea what they would say, but she was willing, Romans 12, 1 and 2, she was willing to submit herself to God's perfect, to his, God's good, pleasing and perfect will, not knowing what the other people would say. Go ahead. Yes, that's good. That's good. Now, as we go back to, uh, as we talk about faith again, Hebrews eleven six comes up, and we need to remember this: without faith, it is impossible to believe to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists, and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Now we understand, now that I have made a little case for Mary and Nazareth, I think we understand a little bit better what Mary had to give up in order to fulfill God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. I'm sure to Mary at that point, and to all of us, as we look at Mary's situation, she is pledged to be married. She's got a couple, months, a couple more months to go, and she'll be married. She can have a child of her own with Joseph in just a couple of months. She doesn't need God to intervene in her life. She has Joseph who loves her. As a matter of fact, Joseph loves her so much that he, the Bible says that, that he quietly wanted to divorce her. He didn't want to make a big scene. He believed her, yet was doubtful. Remember my message on help my unbelief? He believed her, yet... It's, it was hard for him to believe 100% that God's good, perfect, and pleasing will is working through Mary. He loves her enough to let her go quietly until God intervened, of course. See, Mary belonged to God fully and offered herself to him fully. She had full permission to work in her life as his will would only imagine it. Verse 38, one more time. I'm going to beat this until you guys understand where I'm going with this. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Remember the angels came and said, hello, don't be afraid. How is this going to happen? None of your business, just trust God. Let me just give you the short version, the cliff notes of what happened. And Mary says, let it happen how God wants. I, I give myself away. Mary had a little faith. Say it with me. Mary had a little faith. See, she did not fight God like we like to fight God, but surrendered in faith, not knowing what was going to really happen. Amen? Yeah. Mary did not know exactly how it was going to happen. She had ideas she had understandings, yet she had a heart and an attitude to, that enabled her to worship God. Let's go down to Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 50. This is the song of Mary. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to give you four verses. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has, but he had been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generation will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Harito. Did I say that right? Haritol? <laughs> While you think of it, I'm going to say Haritol. <laughs> Highly favored. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. That's okay. That's okay. 
Heidi To. Who's going to say Heidi To? Or Heidi Favor. Favor. Heidi Favor. Yeah, actually, Heidi means have my favor. I'm not going to learn Greek tonight. That's okay. Heidi. <laughs> Heidi Favor, right? Yeah. Heidi. And well, the Bible uses Hari Toho, which is highly favored, full of grace. Mary had a heart and an attitude of worship, of surrender, of humbleness. And in her song, she expresses this. She says, further down, she says, God, you didn't look at others. You, you chose me because you saw me. See, living in New England, living in a, in a very um, cold area, not just cold outside, I'm talking about uh, hearts. You know, our church has been really, really good as far as coming back into the building. We're probably, you know, uh, 70, 80%, you know, back. Most churches on average have 30% of their attendees coming back this is this includes online and in person if we include online we are at a hundred percent well maybe ninety percent however the, the math works out I haven't checked in a while but we are doing pretty pretty good so thank you for those of you who are watching this online Mary was was willing to submit to God her entire self why I give myself away. Get ready to sing that. And as Mary was given, was willing to submit to God, God lifted her up. Let's read uh, verse uh, 49 more time. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy, in his, holy is his name. Verse 15. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. My question to you tonight is this. Are, are you willing to take the first step to have a little faith like Mary? Say it with me. Mary had a little faith. Can you imagine what a lot of faith would look like? Can you imagine if all of us here tonight, and those of you watching online, if we all of a sudden take the little faith that we have and combine it? Can you imagine that? Mary had a little faith. Can you imagine every single one of us here tonight, and those of you watching online, we take our little faith and we trust God. Amen. Romans 12, uh, 12, 1 and 2, one more time. Therefore, uh, this is not Apostle Paul uh, speaking, this is me speaking to you. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer up your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. This is your uh, step of faith. Verse 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So would you take the first step tonight? Can we stand please? Can you take the first step tonight and say, I am the Lord's servant. Verse 38 in Luke chapter 1. I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's servant. May, uh, may your word be fulfilled. God, whatever you have for me, I am willing. I am ready. I am giving myself. Say, I give myself. I give myself away. Why? So you can use me. Mary had a little faith. 